my homosexuals, what a day. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. The progress has been very, very good. I, you know, if you've been sticking around, my right leg was dealing with some strains behind the knee because it was overcompensating while my left uh, quad tendon was recovering for the past five, six months. Now, the left quad tendon is confirmed at 100%, which is great. Uh, I don't feel the need to do accessories every day anymore, which honestly takes a big load off of how much time I have to spend in the gym and how much effort in the long run. Um, so that's at least, it's a big burden <laughs> off my shoulders. But, you know, there's always some extra wiggle room you could work on something else. And so with my right leg being the way it is, I've been trying to hit a couple accessories after my workouts, just whether it's a leg extension, calf raise, you know, single leg, like like um, like a straight leg, uh, like a deadlift, something like that. Um, just to really stretch the back of my leg as much as I can without it pulling or tearing uh, to get that confidence back. And honestly, what's worked, what's what worked the best, and th I've had consistent results with this, which is pretty wild to me. But I guess you know, sometimes the simple answers are always the ones that can really make the long-term growth a lot better because. With it being as simple as it is and seems, uh, you can go a lot easier and not stress your body out to the point to long-term permanent injury. And I've just been foam rolling the shit out of the back of my knee, and <laughs> it's working pretty. It's it's working wonders. I got. I'm gonna go buy my own because of how well it's f been feeling. Because um, it's just it's it's that little bit of stress that can really touch on that specific pinpointed muscle without having to really depend on all the stuff around it. I told you guys that the reason I was doing sled pulls for so long with my le left quad tendon was because it was the only thing that I did in the past six months that I could feel it actually strengthening the left quad tendon itself rather than just strengthening my quad muscles around it to make up for the pain, but not actually recovering the injury at hand. And so that's what the foam roll has been doing for sure. And I'll start with two legs and like, you know, I'll try to go a little easy on it, but. Dude, if you if you gotta kind of just grind into it sometimes, I know you don't want to fuck around with something that hurts, but if you gotta smooth that muscle out, you gotta smooth it out, and it's gonna hurt like a bitch no matter what you do. So I'll just cross my good leg on top of the hurt leg and do the foam roller that way, and it fucking hurts. If you've never done it before, even if you aren't injured right now, it's probably gonna hurt like a bitch. <laughs> it's just a very sensitive muscle, ligament, and tendon just sitting in the back there that just does not want to be absolutely squished to shit but it's making it more confident in the long run so I'm, i gotta deal with that short-term pain for some long-term goodness you know but other than that the the lifts were kind of fucking insane today i had no plans i've been doing my 12-hour shifts at the hospital and this was the first day i had off even though it doesn't feel that way because i worked this morning and i have to go back tomorrow but you know technically I'm off tonight, so I just slept all day and then went to the gym late, and I did not expect to feel as good as I did. It's it's really great to have those days where you can really put your heart and soul into it and then not have to fucking worry about your body hurting, <laughs> you know? It, it's destroying any doubt you have over your self-esteem when it comes to doing anything in this life is integral for long-term growth and passion i'm telling you because i like I, it's a pause clean injured day so i was just gonna i just I, I i wanted to just feel out what felt nice and what i ended up deciding on doing is a uh if you know klokov i did a good three to five second pause at the knee on the way up did the full clean but then I added in a long paused front squat in between the clean and the split jerk. And that really fucked me in a good way. It, it was just tough as shit. But um, I did the full, uh, I got to 275, which again, a, like it, it, it's disturbing how well I've been get, uh, doing with recovery. Just the experience is golden. I'm t it, it will last you a lifetime to properly work through an injury that could be debil debilitating for the rest of your life. You know, having chronic pain is a serious and common issue with most people because there's just not enough knowledge and education being thrown around uh, without a, a money wall blocking off its source to allow people to grow w through those things that they don't understand, you know? So many people don't stretch already 
And so if you don't even know how to stretch or work mobility or flexibility or just certain sensitive tiny muscles that don't ever get touched like my tendon or behind my knee, it's going to be near fucking impossible for you to do a proper recovery that doesn't last like a six months to a year minimum. Because even with all the knowledge that I have, it still took nearly six months to get back to full confidence. Um, and even at the end of that, I still have to deal with other shit. So I'm proud to have been able to throw some heavy weight without really worrying about where my body was at, you know? Um, I will say, you're, I don't know if you've seen it or not yet, you're probably not, but I did very well. It felt so fucking confident. I know I'm primed right now, physically. Like, I have never been this strong. It's fucking amazing. Like, 275 was easy as shit today, which is awesome for my longevity when it comes to the rest of the program that I still have to complete once my right leg feels good. But I got a little cocky, you know? <laughs> Sometimes you get under the weight, and it is good to push it to an absolute limit sometimes to the extent that is healthy for what you can handle you know but you really sometimes have to push it that extra that extra limit in order to in order to really benefit from the effort itself you know um it's that it's that little bit of um what can i say Pushing yourself to the limit without PRing or focusing on the PR, just focusing on that maximum effort uh, so that your body can have to put itself in a position to where it has to do better or crumble. <laughs> and I know that that seems a little self-degrading uh, when it comes to a, a recovery, but it's, it's got to be at your own rate. You got to understand how your own body feels in order to truly test it. And I knew for a fact, like, there was no pain. I felt good. I may not feel as confident right now because of it, but that doesn't mean it's not there. And if, I, I say it all the time. If you're physically okay, it's all fucking mental, you know? you got to put in the effort to at least try and do it, you know? So I got to the point where I was I, – I did the first uh, 275 attempt, and I sat at the bottom of that fucking front squat for at least 10 seconds, like way too long. It would have been great if I had known how difficult it was going to be on my core. Because the whole point of doing it was sitting there long enough to where I felt an absolute burn. You know, fucking the shit out of my core. So that when I did the split jerk, I would have to use maximum effort uh, without doing several reps in a row. Because, you know, I say it a, a bunch, but on the split jerk, the deciding factor is going to be how strong your core is after the clean. You know, and so you have to be able to come back up come back from that heavy lift with enough to stand there confidently with a stable core to where your dip and drive goes straight up and down like a typical front squat would. Because if you go down and then push off on your toes because your core can't handle it, then you're going to push forward and not fucking get it. And on that first attempt, I did not lock it in as hard as I needed to. And my foot positioning was great. I just didn't have as vertical of a drive that I needed. I didn't push through that extra inch higher that I needed to get to that maximum level of effort and I fucked it up and it's okay to fuck it up I promise <laughs> you're going to sh like you're gonna screw the pooch every now and then that's just how it is but it's whether or not you come back from that in a positive and productive way that matters you know we typically don't pick our traumas and our obstacles and our the turmoil that we have to go through in our daily life you have to just accept what happens and see how you can grow from it because the only thing that you can control is your individualized effort after the fact to grow and adapt and become more and more passionate with every step that you attempt to take. So I was like, fuck it, dude. Like, I know I got this shit. I'm going to go again. It may not look as pretty and it may not be as good, but I'm going to get a good fucking lift before I leave this gym. <laughs> I swear to God, I, that was, I was not going to leave. And I'm proud to say that although uh, the clean wasn't as confident, sure and the um front squat was where it was um the, the front squat was where i wanted it to be but i didn't have that same core strength on the second one as the first one it's just it's inevitable when you put in that much effort to fuck up and then you have to redial it all back in it just it sets yourself up for failure but again pushing through that failure is going to be the reason that you make long-term progress every fucking time so I just did my best. I only could hold it for like two or three seconds at the most. 
Because I, I could feel my head getting fuzzy. I felt that I was going to fucking pass out if I sat there for too long. So I just came back up. And, it you know, again, it's not perfect. It's not beautiful like I would hope for it to be. But, motherfucker, I made it. That's what matters. I fucking made it. That's what's going to make my progress really shine through. My leg felt amazing. I did my absolute best. I pushed with my back foot a little bit when I caught it, but I did immediately realign my knee to where it would be fully balanced in a good position. And there was a, the lockout was fucking beautiful, man. So I can't, I really can't complain. The bench was also insane. Like I, (laughs) oh man, I feel like I got so much to talk about right now. I really did not expect anything with bench today. I went really hard the other day, just doing the super slow eccentric 315 pause bench. And I didn't want to go that heavy, but I didn't have anything better to do. You know, it's this fuck around intermission until my uh, right leg feels fine. So I was just doing like comfortable, heavy top sets. And I don't want to like whenever I'm doing a recovery week, but I'm trying to maintain that strength. I do like zero volume and then I just pack on the heavy weight as much as my body can allow me to do so without feeling like I'm going to injure myself. And I, especially after the hard ass uh, cleaning jerk session I did, I didn't expect to get that high. But man, who would have guessed that I would have put 355 on the bar? <laughs> it's fucked. It's so insane that that's the kind of progress I'm at now. After an entire week of hard uh, workouts, just going heavy and not really thinking about recovery when it comes to my bench at least. Because the other day I just went heavy as fuck on the 315. An unprepped, just out of nowhere, 355 solid ass bench. <laughs> that is nuts. 100% would have hit 365 if I did it the other day. 100%. Which is fucking awesome, dude. I'm. We're getting there, man. It was a long six months of recovery. And getting back to being confident in my body and embracing just the positives out of a horribly negative mindset. But that's that's what it has to take sometimes. You have to allow yourself to fall to a point where you have no choice but to get back up and do better. Because if you're breathing, you're going to be fine. I promise you. We are lucky to be alive and we are lucky to be here putting in our best effort. So if we are here and we are conscious and we are breathing... All you got to do is your best, you know, for that day. It doesn't mean you have to hit a new PR a new fucking world record. Just do what your body can do and be happy with that. Give yourself the credibility because that's where people really lack. It's giving them, giving yourself the reassurance that you did what you could and that's all right. You cannot imagine failure. You can only hope for the best and then deal with the consequences afterward in the best productive way that you can and I, you're just going to have to take my fucking word for it. The spotter I know looked like grabbed the bar for a second, but he swore in his life that he did not tug at all. And after looking at it, I didn't feel any support on his end. And it honestly looks like he almost bumped the bar out of the proper bar path because it went a little back toward my head for a sec. But I was locked the fuck in. I did not have a room for error. So I just drove it as hard as I could. And I'm, I'm proud to say that I am hitting that shit with confidence now, you know? Again, if I was a bit more prepped and primed, I I feel like 365 is going to move like butter. It's going to be nuts, man. I love being able to see the accumulation of all this fucking effort, man. It's such a different kind of feeling. I told you no matter what, even if I got injured again, which coincidentally, I'm not like quote unquote injured, but there is something limiting my lifting. Right after my left knee healed, who would have thought the right one would get fucked up right away? But no matter what. I'm still learning from these experiences and I'm still building upon them and doing better in the long run. And just the, today's absolute, fu- this whole week since I've been doing these more chill workouts is absolute fucking proof that I'm getting there in a very positive way, you know? People think that six months is too long and having shitty workouts or a lack of confidence in yourself for that long isn't worth the effort. But I'm here to fucking tell you that if you believe that you just haven't done it yet, You know, only the people that have truly pushed it to that limit and gone through what it takes to get past a long term recovery knows that this is not just a fling. This is not just a I'm here to fuck around and find out. And then if I feel like quitting, I'll quit. I want to do this for the entirety of my healthy, positive lifestyle. You know, until I die, 
I don't care if I'm 85 and whipping the PVC pipe. I'm going to be whipping something over my head because I believe that anybody can do it as long as you take the proper care and attention to allow your body to grow at the rate it needs to support that, you know? Shit. <laughs> oh, physically, I got to give it a 9.55 for sure. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't as good as I could have imagined it to be. Cleanager came out of nowhere. I just wasn't ready for it to feel that good, quite frankly. Um, and it did tank me down a little bit to have to rebound uh, back from that setback. Um, but the bench was also, it just felt so, everything just lined up. I did not feel prepped. I did not feel primed. I did not feel confident. But I fucking did my best. And I just accepted what happened to be the faith of my own accumulation of effort. And whatever happened, happened. And f some fucking how, I'm throwing heavier cleaning jerks than I've done all program at the, at, with one of the hardest uh, complexes I've done with ease, almost, and then a 355 bench with zero prep after a hard cleaning jerk workout. Shit, man. I'm telling you it's worth it. It is something different to be able to push yourself until you have to come back and grow beyond what you ever expected yourself to be capable of doing. Well, I was mentally, oh shit, I'm, it's a 9.75 kind of day. It's just great, you know. Uh, on top of all the work, all the college, all the social life, the gym, it seems so tough. But when you really just try to have the best mindset you can, just doing the best you got with what you got, and being truly appreciative for the opportunities and lifestyle that you're allowed that you've allowed yourself to live, you know, it, it I'm, I'm truly thankful, although I'm super busy and it can cause some stress sometimes that no matter what, in the end, I have wonderful people in my life and I have wonderful opportunities. I love my job. I love the things that I'm studying. I love what I lift. I love who I hang out with all the above, not because I randomly found these amazing things in my life but because I worked fucking hard to put myself in the environment that I knew would make for the most positive one, you know, that was suited to me. I'm not saying that I'm, I don't give a fuck about anyone else and I'm just going to do whatever I want to get where I want to get to. I depend on these people and these experiences, you know, and a healthy, it's just, it's just something different. I, I can't explain it in a way that would make sense unless you truly have gone through it yourself. You just have to remain consistent and vigilant with the efforts that you're putting in because it will come. You can't choose when it happens. You, you, you won't know when you're happy in life until you are already happy. It just happens. And you're going to look back and be like, how the fuck did we get here? <laughs> I, tell people all the, I tell people all the time, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just here. I'm just doing my best. And I, I got here through sheer fucking will and passion. So I'm going to keep doing it no matter what. Because I know that no matter how shitty I can feel sometimes and how much my brain wants to fight me, if I push through and I do my best and I just love the things that I have the privilege of loving, then fuck the rest of the other bullshit because it really does not fucking matter. Just do your best. Live life the way you want to. Fuck around a little bit. Have fun. That's all it is. Doesn't got to be so fucking complex all the time. I will not be back tomorrow. It's rest day. I need to fucking relax. I just had some awesome Waffle House with the homies, and I am I'm gonna cl I'm gonna clonk the fuck out tonight and just sleep all day tomorrow. But I got no complaints. I'm loving it. I'm gonna I, I'm probably gonna do one more uh, fuck around workout on the upcoming snatch day because that's the day that I did actually get to complete last week before my right leg was hurting. Um, if my right leg feels at 100%, we'll get back on the program right after for the power clean and jerks and the uh, heavy back squats. If not, we'll just take another week to fuck around. I'll probably focus more on volume since I just did a pretty heavy week. Um, and we'll just see what happens. I'm just going to recover at the best rate I can do, accept what happens, and love life along the way. Let me know how your lives and lifts have been going. Appreciate y'all hanging out as we do. And I love you. <laughs> I'll be back. See ya.